Uh, I'm going to talk about a question that I ask myself over many years of working with leaders around the world, and that is, why do they derail? And what can we do about it? And I've been devoting my uh, later part of my professional life uh, to trying to figure out how I best can help leaders. You know, leadership is something which, of course, like all of us, uh, is formed over a lifetime. We uh, start out in life. Of course, you can say, many people ask, are leaders born or are they made? It's uh, a question that doesn't really, um, uh, because it's, of course, a combination. And genetics will play a role. But what is very important is, of course, uh, parental figures, whether they are grandparents, older siblings, or the parents, teachers. We talked about that yesterday a lot, how teachers influence your life. And um, that is, you know, the family is actually the first organization you're part of. That's where you learn about authority. That's where you learn about competition. That's where you learn about how to deal with emotions, how to express them, and how to manage them. And of course, significant life experiences play a big role. Uh, both being very successful, for example, early in life in something, or uh, dramatic life experiences like death in the family or so. All of that uh, plays a role. And when you then grow up, you also are exposed to leaders in different forms, in organizations, in pub uh, public sector and so on. And they, of course, also play a uh, role as a model for you how to behave or not to behave. And of course, that's where I come in. Uh, and that is a very small part, of course, in uh, this development of leaders. But um, I try as best as I can and have uh, found it very satisfying to work with uh, people, young leaders. The paradox is that we all would like to see leaders that are modest, authentic, truthful, trustworthy, and selfless, and of course, inspirational. They are supposed to have the vision for us to follow and to make the world better. So, where are we? Is this what we see today? Look around you and what we find. We have narcissistic, self-centered, uh, greedy, deceitful leaders, a lot of them. And uh, as we all know, the world today, I, w I don't work with political leaders, but uh, they are certainly today a concern for all of us, I think, some of them at least. Um, so why do leaders derail? Question I ask myself very often. Um, many leaders are caught up in a narcissistic bubble. And as you, I put up here, they suffer from hubris. Hubris is a Greek word. The Greeks knew very well and wrote many plays about this and the downfall of people who um, suffer from uh, uh, an inflated narcissism. We all need to have a bit of narcissistic aspect. We need to feel good about ourselves. But when it becomes excessive, it becomes detrimental. Um, many leaders 
don't know themselves. They haven't figured out how they are impacting the people they lead. They don't fi haven't figured out how they uh, best deal with conflict to best figure out how to collaborate with people around them, how to pro project a vision that engages people to follow them. And so uh, that's something to work on. As a result, they don't get the best out of their people. And uh, as I said, narcissism very often gets in the way, but they also don't spend the time and understanding the people that they work with. And that is, of course, a key thing. Um, as a result, I worked with many uh, leadership, top leadership teams around the world. And why I do that is because I think that, I believe that if uh, a top team is leading an organization with hundreds and thousands of people, if we make the leaders more reflective, more self-aware, more compassionate, more truthful, more able to handle and manage people, we can make not only the organization better, but also the people that work there more committed and um, working more better. Um, and many organizations are like gulags. They are, people go there, they need to earn their money, they need to pay the rent and so on, but is there a commitment? Is there a true feeling that this is where I can have, uh, m m my life can have a meaning? That's a very important aspect. And um, the most difficult thing in the world, according to Talis, is to know their self. And if you know a little bit or have visited the Delhi, uh, Delphi, sorry, uh, on the temple of, of Apollo, it says, know thyself. And that's basically what I spend most of my professional life trying to help people to do, to know themselves. Because if you know what your strengths are, what your passions are, what your weaknesses are, what, how you can best interact with others, and what has been important to you over your life that have formed you the way you are. Then you can start reflecting and say, well, maybe I, I should change in that. And um, so that's what I spend my time on. And it's wonderful. It's so rewarding to work with people. And uh, I, I felt very privileged. I wanted to just uh, give you another quote here of Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard is, or was, a Danish philosopher and a writer. And he says very appropriately that the tragedy of life is that you have to live it forward but you can only understand it backward. And that is something which uh, I think we should keep in mind. Um, I also work uh, at this um, international business school. We have uh, five campuses by now, I think four or five. Uh, Fontainebleau in France, where it started, and uh, uh, Singapore, Abu Dhabi, and now San Francisco. And it's an international school to the point there that none of the faculty, none of the students are more than 15% from any nationality. And I uh, work with uh, my partner, Manfred Kestefries, who has focused his life on um, leadership 
at its heart, leadership is about human behavior. And that's what I've been trying to uh, put forward here. What we do, how we do it, why we do it. And effective leaders are those who know how to liberate the human energy and inspire people to positive action. To feel that every human being needs to feel that you have a purpose in life. It's not the money that drives people. It's the purpose, the meaning of your life. And the, the, the leaders have a responsibility to, to uh, give the chance to people to have that. Now, the heart of leadership, just to conclude, is hope. You need to have a vision. You need to be able to paint a, a vision of where, where are we going and to get the followers to come and engage with you. And that takes courage and uh, then humanity. We talk a lot about humanity these days and it's a major part of leadership, of course, how you care and commit to both your vision and to the people who you, uh, follow, follow you. Humility, we talked about that. Narcissism is destructive. Humanity and humility and how you interact with your people, how you engage with them is important. And of course, humor helps. Not making fun of others, but being able to see, make a bit of fun of yourself. So with that last, true leadership is the courage to make decisions that benefit next generation. And I have intentionally put three good examples of people who are trying their best and devoted their lives to uh, the next generations. <laughs>